In this video, I want to give you a short tutorial on how to upload an assignment uh, for Minitest 2. And the whole interface is going to be using GradeScope, uh, basically the GradeScope's output to communicate what is the exercise. Um, and in this video, I want to explain to you how to write the file format in a, um, in a way that GradeScope can read it. Um, so, once you start your mini test, uh, ideally you would get you would be greeted with this interface where you could just upload a file. For now, I just I want to upload just a blank text file. So if I do that, I click on uh, a blank web file. Notice that it has zero bytes because it's just an empty file uh, with a YAML extension. Make sure your files have a YAML extension. Uh, and then you just click on Upload. Uh, and after a bit... Okay, and after a bit, you will get this output. You won't get the thing on top, because that's just uh, visible as, as my user. But you would see something like this. And this is telling you exactly what you should do for each one. And because I submitted an empty file, um, they're all, there are each section, basically the file is going to be structured so that you have each section will be um, one exercise. Uh, you will have one section for exercise one, two, three, and so on. So in this case, I gave you seven exercises to do. Um, and you can see in the error message, it says that give a DFA that recognizes all words that end with BA. So that's what you're supposed to do, expected to do um, in the first exercise. So let's try to write that PDA, uh, sorry, that um, and DFA. So I want to write a DFA for that. So one way we could do is by writing it down. So we write exercise one by EX1, and the key is important, okay? And now uh, we add tabs or spaces. I'm just adding two spaces, but you can use as many as you want, as long as they're indented correctly. Uh, and first I'm going to show you how to write um, a YAML file by hand, but I will also give you guys uh, a helpful tool that lets you draw the DFA uh, and then convert it automatically to a file format like this, so that you don't have to do it um, by typing like I'm doing now. So let's see how, but let's see the, the file format anyways. Uh, okay, so I want to write a, a, a DFA that starts that ends with BA. Okay, so I actually already have uh, the solution for that. So I'm going to use JFlap, which is a very helpful tool. Um, I'm going to send you the link after. So if I this is how I, I gave the solution. Okay, so I just wrote this. Uh, let me make it a bit bigger. Okay, perfect. I gave this um, This is a possible solution, right? Um, where I start in this state, and if you right click, press here, this is the view mode. You can check that it is initial, and this would be a final state. Okay, so basically, you have a self loop, you're connecting to Q1 and so on. So if you read B and then A, uh, you are done, and then you can, because it has to end in BA, if you read anything else, you have to go back to the beginning. If you read B, that means you could have read multiple Bs and then eventually an A. Um, so that's basically how the DFA works. I don't really want to digress too much on on how to design this DFA because uh, that's that's another another kind of video, but not this one. Um, okay, I cannot move this very well. Let's, can I move this here? Ah, oh, perfect. Okay. So this is. Um, an example of a DFA. So how would I write this DFA in the file format that we uh, just wrote? Okay, so let me make put this on top. Okay, so I want to start by writing the start uh, state. So the start state is S0, so I write start underscore state, start underscore state, and I write Q0. What is the final 
the only accepted state is Q2. So I write accepted states to be just Q2. Okay. And then what do I want to write? I'm going to start from Q0 and I'm going to draw all the edges. So now I want to write the edges and I, I add uh, another indentation level. So this, the indentation is matters because this is, if you think about it, it's kind of like Python in a way. Indentation does matter here, it's significant. So then you have to write edges and each edge you have to put a little dash to represent the edge. So now what do I write? Okay, so my edge always has a source and then a destination and then a character over the edge. So what is the source? Q0. Uh, where is the destination? Uh, Q0 as well. Uh, and then what is the character A? The other the other edge um, Q1 would be so that would be this edge and now here uh, source Q1 destination Q1 char B so I'm drawing this one uh, and then I want to do source to be uh, A destination to be uh, sorry Q1 destination to be Q2 char to be A okay now I'm in Q2 source Q2 destination Q1 with B okay finally I want to write uh, source Q2 destination Q0 uh, char A so this edge and finally in Q0 I already wrote as above okay so now this should be it this is one way of writing this DFA so now let me save it to blank uh, and now I'm going to re-upload it. So I press here. Now I can hide this window. So I click here. Blank. So now I wait a bit. Okay, and then after you load it, you would get this uh, output. And notice that I still got an error. I got, um, could not parse the FA, error is in state Q2, not going edges for character A. And if I go back here, I notice that I, I wrote Q1 when I should have wrote, written Q2. So I have two for Q before I had two overlapping uh, states coming out from, uh, sorry, edges coming out from Q1. I had these two plus this, which is wrong. Um, so now, no outgoing edges for Q2 to A, and now there is. And I'm gonna re-upload it. And, and now, after loading, uh, GradeScope tells me that I got it right. I got the first solution correct. Um, part two is whenever you see an exercise that has part one and part two, part two will be um, give the smallest uh, DFA or it has to have at least a certain amount of states. Um, and that is, that is when you get, uh, that's what you're supposed to do in part, um, in part two. So here you see part two, and if you don't give a PDA, uh, sorry, a DFA that is correct, then you just say, it just tells you to solve this part first. Only when you get this part, you can get the final five points. Um, okay, but as you might imagine, writing down, um, you know, writing this diagram using JFLAP and then <coughs> um, writing down the YAML might be a morose thing so I actually wrote a tool for you guys to optimize up automate this um, process so let's say I don't want to save anything let's say that you um, 
already, oops, where am I? Let's say that you already uh, created one uh, JFLAP file, so you can, after you open a file, JFLAP. As you might imagine, you can, with JFLAP, it allows you to draw these diagrams, as I was explaining before. Um, so feel free to explore this tool, and then you might be, you want to, you can save it, uh, save as or, or save. Uh, and this will generate a JFF file, like the one that is here. So in this case, I have one for each exercise. The name, if you if you create a JFLAP file for each exercise and you name them as EX1, EX2, EX3, and so on until exercise seven, um, so if you use this naming convention and you add them into a zip file, so let's say this is my solution uh, dot zip, uh, and I add all files gff. I'm doing it by the command line. You of course don't need to do it. So in this case, I have my uh, my solution in a single zip file, and I have all my files here: seven, six, five, until one. Um, okay, just to confirm with you that the zip file was created. So what you can do now is you can use the tool that I wrote, which is jflap to YAML, and that will convert the zip archive. So do minus Z for zip file. You give the, the zip file, and if you don't do anything by default, um, you want to write the output file. So there's a bug here that I'll fix. As I was saying, if you don't add a single output flag, so if you just do minus Z and the file name, it will print out the YAML for you in the screen. Um, but you can always do minus O and say my um, homework uh, mini test two dot YAML. And that generates a file, mt2.yaml, which is the solution. Um, and now I can uh, resubmit. I can open mt2, upload this, wait a little bit. Okay, and the result is this. You get, in this case, I already gave you this, I uploaded my solution, which gets me all the points correctly. If you wanna, click on code, you will see all the lines that were generated. So there's quite a few, one, few ones. Um, this is the procedure I recommend you to do, is just uh, use the command line to um, convert. First create a zip file, and then run uh, jflap minus z, and pass the minus o for output and set the file name that you want to create. Okay, I hope you can do this uh, easily. And I have a good one.